So welcome to the uh, what to do when you're a health science major. This is the career event. I know this is a question that everyone has, you know, wants to be answered. So, but please don't leave with any unanswered questions. All right, so first I want to introduce our president of the Health Science Club, Katie. Hi, everybody. Um, so last semester in the spring, the e-board for the Health Science Club got together, and we were trying to think of what events we could do for this upcoming school year. And um, we're a new club, and the health science program here at Stockton is a relatively new program as well. And a lot of questions that we get for the club are, what do you guys do, and what is health science? So um, a lot of people who are health science majors think you have to go into grad school for PT or OT or speech, because those are the main programs here. But um, what a lot of people don't know is that there are a lot of different opportunities in healthcare and a lot of different employment positions um, available to you. So we figured we would bring in a panel um, of experts or people who work in the healthcare field to talk about some of these opportunities. So um, we hope you enjoyed today's event. And our next Health Science Club meeting is on Thursday at 4.30 in C001. If you're interested in joining and finding out a little bit more about what we do, we have um, some great service opportunities and just a lot of information about um, healthcare and Stockton. So we'll see you there. Thank you, Katie. All right, I just wanted to mention that this is sponsored by the Health Science Club, the School of Health Sciences, uh, the Career Center, and also the Alumni Affairs. So first, I want to introduce Sarah Faro. She's the Director of Alumni Relations. Thank you, everyone. Um, I just want to thank you all for being here. I'd like to especially thank our alumni who are here. We know how busy you are, and we appreciate you coming back and sharing your experience and your expertise with all of our students. Um, for all of our students, I'd like to congratulate you for taking the initiative to be here. Uh, it really does make a difference. Um, it's not just what you know, sometimes it's who you know, and the combination can be deadly, and I mean that in a good way. So continue to do this. Um, any career development opportunities that pre present themselves, take advantage of them. And that's it. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, and also, I'd like to introduce Pat Donahue. She's a career, she works in a career center, so if you have any questions, grace to be here. Hi. Um, again, very glad to, to be able to, uh, to co-sponsor this with the Health Sciences Group and with the Alumni Affairs. Thank you. There is pizza and soda afterwards, thanks to Alumni Affairs. And um, um, I wanted to mention, uh, we'll have a handout uh, available. It'll be up on the second floor. That's where we've got the food. But there's a... a um, we're all about what you can do with your major, how you can get experiences beforehand. And one of the things that someone in our office uh, has done is created a, 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 a handout with all kinds of job titles, some of which I am certain that you will hear uh, today from our panelists. And um, the rest, you can. we have resources that you can look this up or get more information about. I also want to mention the career fair is Thursday. I hope some of you are planning to come. There are definitely folks from the healthcare field. And those of you who are thinking about things like O, physical therapy and occupational therapy, there are folks who are coming now to recruit you before you disappear off into the grad programs. They would like to get to know you now. So um, it's the, the career fair, there are people there who can hire you who can um, uh, provide you with volunteer and internship opportunities as well. So, and we'll be there for moral support, okay? So I encourage you to experience that. And also, um, we have walk-in hours every Wednesday through Friday, 11 to 3. So come and get, uh, you know, come get uh, advice, information, get your resume reviewed. Um, I also uh, regret to inform you that someone, uh, one of the people who was going to talk about jobs for folks with a bachelor's uh, could not make it today, and, um, um, but I can put you in touch with her if you have an interest in, um, uh, it's a company called Emergency Medical Associates, and they are very eager to recruit at Stockton, and that's wonderful news for you. Okay, so, uh, and thank you very much to the Health Sciences Club and to the school for uh, working with us. Thank you, Pat. So as we mentioned, today we'll, we'll be, um, you're at the uh, what to do with your health science major. And today, at between 4.30 and 5, we'll have our panelists speak about um, what you can do and what, what you 
how you can create your own career path. And also, it'll give advice for all of you, and me too. Um, from 5 to 4.30, uh, 5 to 4.40, um, we will open, open it to questions for all of you. So if you have any questions, like I mentioned, don't go home with any unanswered questions. Ask questions and uh, make sure you are well fed once we are finished. <laughs> so, and that, by the way, uh, we'll have the pizza upstairs, and that's going to be at 540. Um, so now I just want to introduce the panelists. Uh, first up, we have, we have Gabrielle Cucci. She is a 2010 graduate of Stockton with a Bachelor's of Science in Biology. She earned a Medical Science and Physician Assistant uh, Studies at Philadelphia University in August 2013 and is currently with this uh, Plastic Surgery Center office in the Egg Harbor Township. Uh, yeah, in Egg Harbor Township. And she also works part-time with Atlantic Care in their trauma department. Also, we have uh, Kathleen Gardell. She's been a regional manager for the uh, clinic information managers with the emergency, with emergency Medical Association since 2008. And, is pre and um, she, is, she is a 2007 graduate of the Montclair State in Health and Nutrition Sciences with the minor in dance. Uh, we have Stephanie Mack, uh, she recently joined Atlantic Care as a patient access, and also um, she works in the emergency room. She graduated Stockton in December 2013 with a Bachelor's of Science in Public Health and with a minor in business uh, with a concentration in Health Administration. And also while she was at Stockton, Stephanie complete, completed an administrative internship with Bayea Home Health Care and was active in the Public Health Society and was also president of the Campus Buddhist Club. And also she plans on um, pursuing a master's in business administration. As we mentioned, um, Denise McKenna, she couldn't make it with us today. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, we have Denise here. Uh, well, Denise, uh, is, she, is the, she works in billing and collections um, at Bay Area Home Healthcare. She received her uh, bachelor's in arts of, in healthcare administration from um, uh, Newman University and has taken um, an, an ML, MBA course in Holy Family, in, at the Holy Family University and completed a leadership training for managers with the Dale um, Carnegie organization. And also she has been with uh, the Bay Area since 1997. And um, last, we have Selena Plath. Uh, she received her biology degree from Stockton in biology in 1999, and her master's in physical therapy from to Stockton in 2001. Uh, this April, she earned her master's of health administration from the University of Phoenix. She has worked as a, a physical, therapy, physical therapist in a variety of settings, uh, which includes um, tender touch rehab services in Camden, um, Horizon Healthcare in Mont Laurel, and, Tr and Trenton Phys uh, Psychiatry Hospital, Psychiatric Hospital in, uh, in West Trenton. She also joined the staff in Bayer Home Healthcare in 2008 as a physical therapist, uh, becoming a rehab manager at their uh, church, Cherry Hill location. And in 2010, she was named director of Bayer. Uh, Bayeda location in Washington Township, New Jersey, uh, which is where she is currently. I'm sorry, uh, West Hampton, New Jersey, which is where she is currently. All right, so now um, we're going to have some questions for our panelists. So first, I just want to give a quick introduction of each of you. Well, as I already, actually already said that. So uh, I want to talk about your career path, actually. So. Um, if we can go in order with uh, Gabrielle, let's talk about your career path and how you became who you are now. Um, so like you said, I went to Stockton. I graduated in 2010 with my bachelor's degree in biology. Um, while I was at Stockton, I became ENT certified. I worked on the ambulance in Epsecon for three years while I was an undergrad. I then applied to Philadelphia University for their graduate program uh, for physician assistant studies. Um, and as he mentioned, I graduated August 2013. Uh, for the past year, I've been working full-time in plastic and reconstructive surgery, um, and part-time on the weekends, I work at Atlantic Care's trauma department as a PA also. 
Okay. And um, Stephanie? I would like to start off with my educational path in majoring in the public health with a concentration in the health administration. I was required to take uh, business classes and a few health administrative classes. Um, I, always in, I was always interested in uh, attending leadership, um, leadership conferences and ultra credit events. I also took president position in a student club here at Stockton, which helped me um, develop my leadership position, uh, skills. Prior to graduation, an internship was required um, in my major. And um, during my internship at Bayada Home Healthcare, I did a project in retention. And um, that's where I created ideas on ways to re recognize the re uh, recognize and reward the employees for their great job so that they can stay with the company for a longer time. I also took a health management course uh, where my professor Ron Kaplan had in uh, had invited guest speakers to come speak about their educational path and their career path. And um, it, he had given us the class, um, the opportunity to network with these people. And that really allowed us, or allowed me to introduce myself to them and sh um, show them my interests in their companies, especially for Atlanticare, which was my first uh, choice to work for. Um, there were two Atlanticare um, guest speakers that I met, and one was a corporate, um, corporate direct, cor director, operational development, and a COO, and they encouraged us to email them when I uh, when they when we applied to the job opening after graduation it was my very first time applying for jo um, jobs in the healthcare setting I tried to find jobs that I may be qualified for most jobs require or recommend uh, some years of experience so I chose an entry-level job this way I can learn uh, how the healthcare system works, and um, work, and I can just like work my way up as I um, through the years. And I uh, also plan to get more experience in the healthcare field before I go back to get my master's in business. And when I apply for the patient access associate. The, uh, position. I took the courage to email the COO and the corporate director, and they then contacted the human resource to offer me the interview, where I was luckily selected out of 6,000 other applicants. Eventually, I passed the interview, and it was a great experience so far working in my position, and I hope to continue my growth in the company. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, and as you already probably know, Kathleen actually is not here, but Denise is. So, um, Denise, can you uh, let us know how you came to be? <laughs> I came to be? Um, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I've um, been with Bayada Home Healthcare for 17 years. The time has just flown by. It's a wonderful company, and I, I just always loved to work in there. Um, it's challenging at times. It's very interesting. How I started, I had my associates in sociology, and I um, began in a collector position. And um, while I was in the, my beginning of my career there, I then pursued my bachelor's in healthcare administration and um, was after a year, I was promoted to a supervisor, 
of a building and collections team. It was very small at the start, and about there's probably maybe three uh, team members. And currently, I manage a um, reimbursement service office of about 24 team members now. And we um, actually process all the claims, um, the insurance, well, it can be insurance or special contracts or private pay claims for um, all of our offices in the state of Pennsylvania, Minnesota, and Hawaii. It's, um, like I said, it's, to me, it's very interesting work. We, we manage all um, aspects of the revenue cycle. We um, hold, you know, if you are interested in, in the financials or um, any, we're not necessarily in my department accountants, but if you enjoy working with numbers or we have to learn uh, many of the regulations with, uh, you know, governmental re -like regulations, um, it involves a lot of research, uh, many conference calls with the insurance companies, uh, escalated projects. We, uh, if you you know enjoy researching, it's it's almost like being a detective when we have to find out uh, you know what's going on with the claims. We we track trends with the payers. It's just there's a whole realm of um, possibilities, and it's truly I, I find it very interesting. Or I wouldn't have been able to do it for 17 years. So and that's pretty much it. Thank you, Denise. It's, it's funny to know how we can all get, and there's different avenues in the health science, health healthcare field. Um, but Kathleen, can you also uh, explain to us um, how your career path, and how you became, you know, well, how you started? So, Selena, I'm Selena. I'm sorry, um, Selena. That's okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, so I just have to say, um, for Denise's role, um, I, I'm very appreciative of, of her role and all of our support office roles in Bay Idaho Home Healthcare because they um, help us get reimbursed for the services that we provide. Um, so to, to go back to kind of where I started, um, and I have to say I feel quite old sitting here. Um, I remember sitting somewhere in the middle there taking um, a course um, many, many years ago. And, uh, and it's amazing to be back. The, the school has changed so much in, in many good ways. Um, so it's pretty amazing to see, um, to see the progress. Um, so I started, um, I came to Stockton with the intent of, of going to the physical therapy program. I came in as a pre-PT um, you know, major. I, I started with my, my bachelor's in bi biology, because um, at the time that was um, the most effective route to, to, to get the, um, to, to complete the prerequisite to apply to the PT program. Um, you know, got accepted to the pre PT program on, on my first shot, which was, which was you know, a godsend, because I know it's very competitive and it's getting more competitive um, as the program develops and, and, and the profession really develops. So, um, so really stayed through my, my full course of my undergrad and, and grad school here at Stockton. Um, you know, I have nothing but great things to say about the PT program here at Stockton. The biology program was wonderful as well. Um, had a lot of support from preceptors along the way, so that was, that was wonderful. Um, so when I finished school in, in 2001, I, I, I graduated from PT school. Um, the first um, seven or so years of my career, I really was 100% treating, 75 to 100%. So um, I found that as I, as I was treating, um, and then I, I treated in a variety of settings, so I did, you know, started in acute care and did outpatient, did um, subacute rehab, did the psych setting, which was, which was phenomenal. Um, every setting that I worked in, there was always some level of, um, of the business side of, of healthcare, um, and that intrigued me. Um, so when I came to Bayada, um, I've been with Bayada a little bit over six years. Um, again, I started out um, in, a, in, a, in a treating position. I was a field PT. I went to, to clients' homes and I treated them in their home. Um, I, I went into assisted living buildings and treated clients in assisted livings. Um, and I really enjoyed it, um, but was approached soon after about uh, moving into a rehab manager role, which at the time, and you guys probably wouldn't know this, both because of age and just because of you know, where you were at probably in 2010, um, but at the time, Bayada Home Health was Bayada Nurses, so we went through a major brand change in 2010. So um, I think a lot of recognition um, with, within the organization about the, the, the diversity of services that the company um, offers, um, you know, both clinical and non-clinical, um, and therapy being one of those. So when I came on board as a rehab manager, 
um, I was or moved into the rehab manager position, I was really, um, I believe, the fourth in the company. Um, it was very new to that develop. That is a, a rapidly growing um, organization. So uh, moved, um, you know, a year later into an associate director position, year after that into a director position. I've been a director now with Beata for nearly three years, um, and it's it's a whirlwind. And I think, you know, part of me misses the, the, um, the treatment, um, you know, the hands-on care, because I don't do that as often um, as I would certainly like to. Um, but I feel like you can make such an impact in healthcare without ever um, laying hands on a patient. There's so many different components to navigate through through the healthcare system, and it's changing. Um, and health economics is changing, and you know, um, you know, kind of service, you know, maintenance and billing and collections. Everything is changing. So, um, so having you know the, the ability to, to impact um, people, um, and, and really, you know, the, the, the goal is to. For any healthcare organization is to provide great care, and certainly at Bayada, that's that's our focus as well. Um, it takes a, it truly takes in, 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 in a sense of village to, to accomplish that and, and to, to achieve our, our goals and to um, provide excellent care. So um, so as I you know evolved, you know I, I've I've grown you know um, kind of straight a little bit from from the hands-on treatment um, side of, of of my profession, but I think um, there's there's just so much opportunity outside of, of, of clinical care per se. Um, to really impact health sciences and, and health, health uh, careers. Thank you, Selena. Mm -hmm. So uh, as you can see, if you wanted to get into physical therapy, this is a great place to start. All right, so let's just give them all a round of applause. <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna ask some questions. Um, so, so the first question is for, for you, Gabrielle. So what advice could you give, give all of us um, if we are interested in phys phys physician assistant? What advice can you give us? Um, I would say look into the different programs in the profession early. Don't wait until your senior year. There's a lot of prerequisite classes that are required, as well as additional healthcare experience. Um, so I would research the programs that you're interested in and have an idea of what they require. Um, and if, you know, with the changing economy and the Health Care Reform Act, the need for PAs in the job market is greater than ever right now. Um, it's estimated that from now until the year 2020, the job market's going to grow by greater than 30%. Um, so there really is a need for PAs, especially in New Jersey. Um, they're found in really all different kind of medical fields and surgical specialties. Um, so I'd really do your research. Um, take the appropriate classes while you're an undergrad and really focus on your GPA, because they do have requirements for your GPA. Um, and there's a lot of applicants, so you really want to, either whether it's volunteering or working in other healthcare fields, you want something that's gonna set your application apart from all the other applicants. Um, and I really think looking into it early um, would really help prepare you for the application process. Thank you. Um, and, and for you, um, Kathleen, I mean, and Stephanie, I mean, um, what can we do to prepare in your field? Um, most of the things that she said was uh, somewhat similar to mine. Um, I would say to get more experience in um, your field and try to build up your resume that uh, could, you know, have an employer see and they will be really um, interested in selecting you as a um, candidate for an interview. Um, I also think that uh, attending the career fair would be a good idea to do, to um, dress professionally and try to network with employers. You could do this um, each year, each semester, just to practice um, talking to the employers and try to find out what kind of jobs there are out there uh, that you may be interested. Um, I, and um, if you plan to look for a job in um, during your um, college years, Try to not look past on a per diem job because as long as you get your foot in the door, 
um, there's always an opportunity in the future, more opportunities to grow. Um, and your status may change after six months or a year. Um, and also, like I have done, when there's always a, uh, when, whenever there's a guest speaker that comes in, af right after class, you can just go up to them and um, try to introduce yourself. Have that courage to um, show that you're interested to talk to them and um, maybe join their company. Um, and do more internships and volunteering. We have um, internship and volunteering opportunities in Atlanticare that you may be interested in, and um, you just you can go on the website and apply from there. Thank you, Stephanie. So just to reiterate, as um, Gabrielle and Stephanie said, is that it's never too early to start your, your career. So, sure, I'll get started. <laughs> So, um, Denise, um, what about you? How, how, what can we do if we were interested in your, um, your career? What can, how can we, what can we do to get started? Um, well, like um, Stephanie mentioned, internships uh, is certainly uh, an entryway into many companies and certainly will provide you with the experience. You would be able to have the opportunity to see if it really is a fit for you. I um, and, and other departments, um, other reimbursement teams within our building, they also, we all usually will have an intern or two all year round. Um, I currently have one um, and last summer I had, uh, it's usually like your senior year that we are normally um, hiring and it's usually, it's usually a part-time um, position and we're very flexible with your class schedules, but it, it's, you know, entry level, and it will just give you a, an experience, uh, expose you to, you know, what some of our processes are. Um, I recommend, you know, certainly following within internship. Also, anytime uh, with any company that you're interested in, in pursuing a position, I highly recommend that you research and you really learn about the company, um, you know, always Anytime I am interviewing, you know, potential candidates, I certainly want to know that they are very interested in our company and have done, you know, their research and truly know our, you know, values, our mission. And, um, you know, I also look for, you know, other examples of, you know, involvement in, in uh, like you said, uh, volunteer work, ex other, you know, activities. Um, besides just your coursework. So to demonstrate, you know, different, you know, I can determine different qualities that I'm searching for. So I just would, you know, recommend just being involved in, you know, as many things that you can and it, um, certainly learn about the companies and certainly take a chance on some internship positions. And since we're on a topic of internships, the Career Center provides a great, an abundance of different opportunities um, for us all. So if you are looking for internship opportunities, you can always go to Career Center. Um, Selena, um, so what can we do in your field to get started? So um, speaking uh, you know, specifically to, to the physical therapy field, I would say don't rule out a clinical uh, affiliation with home health. Um, I think it's, um, it's from physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, it is a field that you can um, enter as a new grad. There, there are support structures in place, mentoring programs in place um, to help a new grad be able to function independently in the setting. Um, from more of the office side to more of the, the non-clinical side, I would say um, similar internships are, are important. I think really looking at those entry-level positions as, as gateways. Um, I, I, I've you know, um, interviewed, hired a lot of um, new grads that um, I have two in my office from Stockton that came really with, um, you know, their goal was not to be in, in an associate position. They, they have um, higher aspirations and um, we're able to, as we grow, get them on the right career track. And sometimes it's coming into to an organization and not really knowing, you know, there's, there's lots of different options. So 
Um, so always learning. Um, you know, I tell our, our, our younger folks uh, in the office that are, you know, um, you know, newer to the workforce, don't get comfortable. Um, always, you know, challenge yourself. Don't get complacent. Um, you know, you can, I think there's a lot of um, um, jobs that you can really, you can learn and you can master your role and you can be excellent and you can make your day at work extremely easy. But that's probably when it's time to, to, to look for a stretch assignment. That's probably where it's, when, when it's time to ask your, your boss or your director, whomever, for some, some, um, some other, you know, kind of, um, um, you know, ta not necessarily tasks or projects that, that you can uh, assist with um, because that's what, what kind of catches the eye of, 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 of leadership. Um, is really the, the stretch assignment that, no, you're not in, in a new role yet, but you want to be, and this is the track I want to go. Um, and I've certainly looked at that. I've ha I had a, um, a, a client service manager, started out as an associate, moved into a client service manager role um, responsible for oversight of clinicians, oversight of, uh, of a, a pretty um, a substantial uh, patient client census, um, moved into a senior support role within Bayada. Um, so lots of different opportunity. I have another associate who's on a marketing manager track. He wants to learn more, you know, about marketing. His bachelor's degree had some of the, you know, marketing courses, and that intrigued him. So um, that's important, you know, to share, you know, during whether it's performance about times or, you know, wh whatever the case may be, share your interests, share your passions that, you know, if you, if you um, move into a position that you're, you're very passionate about, you're going to be excellent at what you do. Um, and that's what every company is looking for. And that's what every leader is looking for is for, for, for folks that really are, um, are um, engaged and, and want to help um, to, to grow, you know, both professionally, but then also help the organization to grow as well. So, um, so I would say, you know, just don't get comfortable, always challenge yourself, um, you know, look for that, you know, internship, that per diem position, that entry level position that may not be exactly the job that you want, but it's going to give you some opportunity um, and, and, and perform, you know, at 100% there and look for more, ask for more. Thank you, Selena. And also, Selena, um, what different healthcare, um, health science, uh, what different opportunities with a student with a health science degree may have different op job opportunities? So within my office, I, the, the office that I oversee, or I have a couple of, um, of different um, functions in my offices. So um, the, the most obvious would be an associate position, and that position would be, um, or I'd say the most entry level would be associate, and that position would be really assisting the client services manager. So they're assisting with day-to-day -day tasks, with scheduling, with um, referrals, with, um, with processing, you know, um, payers, entering payers, making phone calls to clients to, to make sure that we, we have the, the right um, insurance, um, uh, making phone calls to clients to coordinate services. And then typically the next step is to move into a client service manager role. Um, and the client service manager is, is, is truly, um, you know, um, a management position. So it's overseeing um, our field staff. It's overseeing um, PTs, OTs, nurses, speech therapists, social work, dietitians, you name it. Um, and then maintaining um, client care, maintaining continuity of care. So they're really um, responsible for a lot in addition to managing those insurance, you know, um, you know um, making sure that we have the right insurance to make Denise's job less, less, of a, less, less burdensome. Um, so we have also, um, like I said, marketing manager role. So I've had um, some, some folks that, that kind of um, come to us with, with sales experience, and then there's others that, that work their way up. We've got um, one of our marketing managers in, in our Atlanta County office actually um, started out as a client service manager. Um, and her background and her passion and what, you know, where her strength was really led her to a marketing manager position. So now she's, she's in more of a sales role. Um, we have community liaison. So we work with um, different hospitals and rehab systems um, to help facilitate, you know, clients um, transfer from the hospital back home. And we want them to get home safely. So we have liaisons in these buildings. And, and some of them are clinical and some of them are non-clinical. We had another um, client service manager who um, started out, you know, in, in a local office and is now a community li liaison over at Thomas Jefferson Hospital, which is a huge hospital um, and, uh, you know, tons of, tons of opportunity there and growing. And um, so it's, um, there, there's many opportunities to, to that end. Um, I have, you know, um, part of what I do is, is a senior living specialty and we have, a, you know, a specialized product that we've um, recently developed. And 
so there's opportunities there that, with associate support positions. So not necessarily um, in a service office where you're managing the day-to-day -day of care delivery and care you know, continuity, but supporting those service offices to help them to, to get the day-to-day -day accomplished, to help them to, to, um, to grow their business, help them to, um, you know, to maintain operations, help them to get reimbursed for services provided. So um, there's the, the billing and collections piece. I work um, very closely with our our reimbursement um, uh, service office. I work very closely with our, our managed care office who um, you know, helps to get the authorizations from insurance companies. We have both clinical and non-clinical um, um, personnel that help us with working with the insurance companies to, to obtain authorization for our services. Um, we have, uh, let's see, um, you know, several, even from our, our Medicare office, we have a, a pretty large office in Philadelphia that um, you know, their responsibility is to, is to um, get um, our, our Medicare data submitted correctly on the appropriate, you know, government type of um, um, forms and, and requests, and they, they transmit data for us, and they give us, you know, uh, develop reports for us based on the data that we're submitting. So um, there's just, there's several opportunities across the company, and I'm looking at just one line of, one line of business. So this is, I'm speaking more specifically to our traditional kind of Medicare um, certified home visit position. We've got pediatric offices, we've got habilitation offices, we've got hospice now, we've got, um, uh, you know, assistive care. Um, so there's so many different uh, uh, branches in, in within Bayada. And that's the other nice thing is, you know, look at the organization and look at, um, I would say when you're looking at places of employment, you know, look at the, their mission statements. Look, you know, if it's something that, that kind of, um, you know, um, um, you know, you can relate to, that might, it's probably an organization you want to work for, you know, so, and, and look at the, the, the different opportunities. I've had um, several of my management team have gone to other offices, you know, to become directors, to become, um, you know, associates, to, you know, have moved to other offices to become managers. So looking at organizations that, um, that, that kind of provide that opportunity across several locations. We had one manager from down here in Atlanta County moved to Hawaii and is now um, a manager over in Hawaii and is living the life over there. Um, but, uh, but there's, there's those kinds of opportunities. And, and I, like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's really, um, I think, you know, um, a little bit of self-reflection, knowing your strengths and, and, and working with those and, and, and working with what drives you. Um, but then also um, just, uh, you know, not getting comfortable and looking at the different opportunities and, and extending yourself a little bit. Thank you, Selena. And um, also, Denise, if Selena didn't take all of them, <laughs> um, what other opportunities do you know of that, that, that someone with a health science degree could attain? Um, well, not just specifically with, with my uh, office or? No, in anything that you know of. Any entry level? Um, well, in the, I work in the, it's considered the support realm of um, Bayada. And we support all the service offices, uh, no matter what the specialty is. And um, in the support, in, in our area, we have um, many um, buildings. We're kind of spread out in this whole complex. But there's also um, accounting that processes the payroll and the payables for all the offices. Um, I work, my team works closely with them. We also have um, cash application uh, department. We have a team that, that provides all the metrics um, and benefits for all of our, our um, employees' uh, health benefits. We have an office that handles workers, worker, workers' comp claims for the uh, service offices. Um, i trying to think what other, there's so many, there's so many different offices that um, support we have in, IT, um, you know, office, uh, and all the, the technology, all the programming, there's, you know, that whole aspect, which is certainly over my head, all the programming, but there's, you know, it depends what your, you know, your interest is. Um, you know, when you, in, in any of our support offices, you start an entry-level position as an associate role, and depending what office you're in, you know, the task will be, you know, pertain to that to that area, but you know, the next level is a senior associate and, and then into different management positions and, and um, from there from management to directors or 
division directors. It's the, the company, our company has been growing um, every single year dramatically. I've seen it firsthand because I've <laughs> been there so long, but um, I haven't, there hasn't been a year that we haven't grown. And, um, you know, so there's just constantly, you know, more opportunity, um, you know, depending on your, you know, your interest. And I know Bayada is always looking for, you know, not just, you know, possibly your skill set, depending on what type of, you know, work you'll be, you know, what type of area. Obviously, if you're, you know, in the clinical background, you're going to require licensing and, and all of that. But, you know, we're looking for certain, you know, qualities in, in, um, in, our, in our teams and, um, you know, when you want to grow and, and, and move into another area, we certainly, you know, we support that because, you know, we're looking for quality people. So, um, you know, it's really just, it's open and you know, there's just so many opportunities depending on what you can go from the clinical side to, you know, the support side. and, and there's really just, you know, all different financial avenues and IT and everything else, so. Thank you, Denise. So as you can see, there's, there's an abundance of different opportunities that we can all have as health science majors. Um, so will there, are there any other opportunities for you, um, Gabrielle or Stephanie, that you know of? Um, well, speaking specifically for physician assistants, um, PAs are pretty much found in every medical specialty now. Uh, majority of PAs, uh, close to 35%, do practice in primary care since this is where the greatest uh, shortage is for healthcare providers. Um, but PAs practice in cardiology, pediatrics, oncology, pulmonology. Um, and then you have a large group that go into surgical specialties such as orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, trauma, plastics, bariatrics. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities and options as a PA as far as what medical field you want to go into, if you want to go into surgery. Um, and there's also PAs that go into the military. Um, a lot of PAs get their schooling paid for by going into either the Air Force or the Navy. So there's options um, in the military branches as well. Um, and then there's also different government jobs for PAs now as well. Thank you. So there's an abundance. So let's just give them another round of applause.